you like to begin with your introduction? Yes, sir. Tim. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I'm Jay Brown. I'm running for County Commission District 10. It's a privilege to be able to speak here at the Democratic Women of Shelby County. I say that because your president, uh, Ms. Virgie Banks, I, I have a special fondness for Ms. Virgie. She uh, is, is part of the reason I'm here before you today. The first Democratic Party event I attended was in April 2012. It was held by Ms. Virgie and some other individuals at a nice little restaurant off of Winter on Winchester. And I showed up. I liked the folks, and at one point in the evening, I I wanted to order a drink. I didn't know if it was appropriate, though, given the setting. And as I pulled Miss Virgie aside and I said, you know, is, is it okay if I order a drink? And she laughed out loud and said that it better be because she had one on the way. <laughs> so I liked her immediately for that and, and other obvious reasons. She seemed to like me too, and she encouraged me to get involved. I did, and here I am. I've come a long way in two years, but that was only two years ago. And so with that, I acknowledge that of the three Democratic candidates, I had by far the least distinguished career. Yet I contend that you should vote for me nonetheless, and the reason for that is pretty direct. With all due respect to the other candidates, Shelby County Commissioner is not a lifetime service award. The Shelby County Commissioners take real positions on relevant issues, they vote, they play a deterministic role in the policies of Shelby County that have real consequences for its citizens. And I'm the only candidate who has sufficiently addressed issues relevant to that. <coughs> the one issue that I want to emphasize today at the Democratic Women's Meeting is the issue of our woefully inadequate rape crisis services. Our county is disgusting in the way that it treats women who report rape and sexual assault. We do not have a rape crisis center to speak of. What we have is a crime victim center which is managed by individuals whose specialty is victims' compensation. That needs to change, and I hope for the opportunity to address that more in response to the question. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Martavius Jones. Good afternoon. My name is Martavius Jones, and I'm seeking the candidate, I'm seeking the commissioner for District 10 on the Chevy County Commission. I'm a native Memphian. I was educated at Central High School. I obtained my Bachelor of Business Administration degree in finance from Howard University. After Howard, I lived in Hartford, Connecticut, where I worked in the Employee Benefits Division of Aetna Life and Casualty, where we worked closely with organizations that were looking to offer group health, group life, and pensions. As I seek this position, I feel that that particular background well equips me when you talk about the fact that 70% of our cost as a Shelby County government is involved in salaries and benefits. I feel that my experience in that particular realm, as well as my experience as an independent business owner and financial advisor, equips me to uh, provide, some, provide my experience and my expertise in those areas as it relates to the decisions and deliberations in those areas. A couple of the issues that face our community that I intend to address is particularly small business. And when we talk about what the, the incentives for businesses that are located that are domiciled here in Shelby County. An example that I'll give you is, as everyone has mentioned, or many candidates have mentioned before, has been the pilot program. But because of our location being in the southwest corner of Tennessee, and right across the river from Arkansas, right, ac right across the border from Mississippi, we don't have control over where people live. However, when we talk about giving tax incentives, I think that there should be, we should ask for a certified payroll. If a third of your workforce lives in Mississippi, that's a third off the incentive that you receive. If a third of your workforce lives in Arkansas, that's a third. You should only receive a pilot 
for those people who live and work in the county of Shelby. That's the first thing that I'll do. The second thing is something that I learned as being a contractor for the federal government. There's a concept called a reverse auction. When you spend millions of dollars, the company's going to provide as big of a profit margin as they see fit. A reverse auction is going to reduce the cost to government for when we let out tens of millions of dollars in contracts. That's the end of my time. Jones for commission. I'm Martavius Jones. I'm seeking your vote, seeking your support for the Shelby County Commission District 10. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mr. Reginald Melton. Thank you all very much. Please forgive me. I am fighting a cold, but I was determined to get here. I support the Democratic uh, Women of Shelby County, and I was not going to miss this no matter what. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I'm a lifelong Memphian. I've lived here my whole life. I have served the community. I, uh, I'm a product of a public school system. I received my education, my undergraduate, from going on college. I got a in science and a master's in public administration, how to run government. You know, I uh, have had a very varied degree of uh, education and experience. I uh, was the Negro Specialist for the City of Memphis. I was the Director of Education and Training for Planned Parenthood. I helped young women and young men make good decisions, and I'm proud of that. Uh, I was a medical director for Bunnell College. Uh, my experience is varied, is wide, and um, I bring that to this position. About 15 years ago, I chose to start a nonprofit that would work with foster children and young people who were incarcerated. And I've spent my life at this location. I'm very proud of the work I do. Um, I won't save the world, but I will save a little portion of it. And I think in life, that's about all we can ask for, isn't it? Isn't it? Ladies and gentlemen, um, I, I am honored to work with, uh, have these other opponents. They are decent people. Amen. We're each seeking Amen. to uh, serve you and to uh, help move our county forward. And I'll be proud to do that if I'm so fortunate to be uh, elected as your county commissioner. I know you have questions, so we'll move forward with those. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> We've actually received three questions. But in fairness to the other candidates, and, and, and per the, uh, uh, his, the protocol that was established at the very outset of this uh, candidate forum, we're only going to present two of those questions. I will present the order, the questions in the order in which I received them. Question number one, what can the county commission do to ensure that the working people in Memphis get paid equitable wages? Sounds like a very uh, uh, worthwhile question. Uh, Mr. Brown, would you like to respond to that? Yes, thank you. The, the issue of compensation is very relevant, and it's relevant to communities like South Memphis and Orange Mound. They're right in the heart of District 10. I think of them as a, a point not often emphasized in the economic development policies we pursue. We have economic development policies that focus on blight, right? Blight is uh, kind of the buzzword that everybody's been talking about for several years. The problem I have with that is that it's, it's an abstraction, and the terms we talk about it in fail to recognize blight for what it is. They treat blight almost like a cause of economic depression, stagnancy. Blight is a symptom of that. And until our policies do address those underlying conditions that result in blight, not come from it, but result in blight, then any efforts we do to fix up properties or bring in outside development to fix up properties are not going to result in sustainable changes. We need to address things like wages, make sure people are getting paid more, we need to address the demand side of the economic picture, which thus far we have failed to do. Thank you. Same question for Mr. Martavius Young. Of course we are here as Democrats, and one of the things that I've, uh, I like to distinguish and I like to say, the Democratic Party is the party of we. 
the Republican Party is the party of me. One of the things that I would seek to do as the Shelby County Commissioner is working with the fellow Democratic, uh, Democratic commissioners and seeing that we pass, you know, and sustain the living wage that's been passed. We may not be able to control what private industry does, but at least those entities that are receiving public funds, they have to abide by what the public and that governing or legislative body would do. So I will continue to work with the Democratic co colleagues, and I would hope that we would have a Democratic mayor who would be progressive in those type of policies. We may live in a red state, but I declare to you that Shelby County is a blue county, and we need to enact those legislations, or legis we need to act legislation and ordinances that are more progressive instead of conserving the low wages that we continue to have here. So we can do it in a similar fashion that President Obama did when he talked about it. He said he may not be able to dictate what Chrysler Walmart may be able to do, but if you're doing business with government, then we have a say there, and I would support that particular stance. Thank you. Thank you. We won't unless we put in office people who do not forget that they work for the public. Amen. I have teachers who have worked and served for 15 and 20 years or losing their jobs because they work 15 and wait, they make too much money under the system. They have earned and gotten to this point and they're losing their jobs. So what is the point about making a livable wage if you're going to be fired because you are making a livable wage? <laughs> we need to make certain that the people that we put in office, ladies and gentlemen, does not forget who put them there. And if they don't do that, we need to get them out of our office. That's how you make the difference. Thank you very much. Mr. Milton, it's convenient. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, please. Go ahead. All right. Question number two. And I couldn't have prepared this question myself because it's an area uh, that's near and dear to my heart. What is your plan to support programs to keep youth occupied and to keep them out of criminal activity? Oh, what a wonderful question. Um, ladies and gentlemen, we, you know, we want to pass some funding for pre-K, which uh, I think if, if it focused on the educational system, it might have done a lot better. What we need to do is we need to put some money in there to work with dysfunctional families. Because if a child goes to pre-K and then you send them back home to a dysfunctional house, how are you helping these children? We have so many ha homes that are completely dysfunctional. There was a study done, and I'm going to do this very quickly, in Boston, a, a detective started seeing so many similar names pop up. He went to the university and got one of the professors, they worked together, and they discovered that about 80% of the crimes that they saw came from five families. They just extended families from them. The reality is we got to get a handle of these families and stabilize them. And if we don't do that, it doesn't matter what else we do. We're not going to do that. And as Mr. I will work with you just that way. Thank you. Uh, but also, I want to say to uh, I hope my time is enough. I have no time for this. Is that you know we're putting uh, we're working on the fairground area. We need to put some things in there where these young people can have time to go and entertain themselves. So they have something to do through the summer instead of just sit around on the ball at the broken hoop. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, <laughs> Mr. Martinez. Jones. Would you like me to repeat the question? <laughs> yes, please. Okay. What is your plan to support program, programs to keep youth occupied and to keep them out of criminal activity? Thank you for the question. I, I think about, we tend to think about where we live as there's a line that basically says that there's the county of Memphis as well as the county of Shelby. And not realizing that when you live in Memphis, you also live in the county of Shelby. I think that the Shelby County Commission should take a more proactive role in the day-to-day -day operations as is of the residents of the city of Memphis. So I intend to work more cooperatively with the legislative body on the city side as well as the county side to make sure that your tax dollars are being used for the youth in all of Shelby County regardless of where they live. Along those lines, when you talk about some of the, the grassy project that's currently being implemented in Shelby County Schools that's looking to curb youth violence, it has worked. When you look at the number of incidents that have taken place, it has gone down. And so we need further funding, additional funding, for programs like that in order for, uh, for us to see a reduction in that. Now, a role, an active role that, juvenile, uh, uh, that the 
Shelby County Commission does play is working with the juvenile court system. It is under the auspices of Shelby County government. We need to make sure that the from the top down, and I saw uh, Mr. Sugarman, who's a candidate here, uh, regardless of who that judge may be in that particular office, the Shelby County Commission needs to work with the Shelby County juvenile court system with the clerk's office to make sure that funding is there to, to expand programs for uh, for the juvenile system. That's, that way we'll see a reduction in youth incidences. Thank you, Thank sir. You. Mr. Jake Brown, same question. Would you like me to repeat the question? Uh, please, please. What is your plan to support programs to keep youth occupied and to keep them out of criminal activity? Well, I would say this. I don't think it should be our goal to keep youth occupied. I think it should be our goal to give youth opportunity. One of the most significant ways we can do that is to change the way we deal with first time, in particular, youth offenders. There are so many barriers currently to going into business, getting started on a productive career path. If you're a kid who's, who's been in trouble with the law before, we need to change that. As it stands currently, if you get in trouble once, you're likely to get in trouble again. And I believe strongly that is because once you've been in trouble once, it's hard to find other things to occupy yourself with. We need to change the way we deal with the predominantly African American men. The system discriminates against them, it limits opportunities. We need to change that if we're going to change Shelby County. 